Alright, hi guys, this is Y4 Studios, and today I'm going to continue my tutorial series. Um, it's kind of a long time between when I do each video just because I've been so busy. But I have the today off, so I'm going to continue working on it. And today I'm going to show you guys how to do a flea bit and gray with the toothbrush method. And I decided to show you guys how to do it using this method because it's a lot easier if you're starting out to do flea bit and grays this way. Um, so basically the toothbrush, it doesn't really make a huge difference on what kind of toothbrush it is. Um, I suggest something cheap because after you do this on one horse, your toothbrush is going to be completely ruined and you'll probably have to throw it out. Um, I prefer softer toothbrushes because I think it's easier on my hands. Um, but the first thing you'll have to do is decide what color you want your flea bites to be. And today I'm going to use Burnt Umber. Um, I've also done it with everything from like a, like a light brown, like a taupe, to a skin tone, to black. Um, it just kind of depends on what you want to do. Um, but the reference that I'm using for this horse is my Paint Arabian Cross. And he's a flea bitten gray Tobiano. And he has very dark brown flea bites on most of his body. Um, he does have a few black ones around the bottom of his legs and on his ears. Because um, he was born a bay, so that's another thing you should take into consideration, is that if you're making it to look like a specific horse, um, and if you can look up what color they were when they were born, because all grays are born dark and then turn white as they get older, um, that will determine what co color of flea bites your horse has. So if your horse was born black, they'll have black or dark gray flea bites when they're older. If they're born bay, they'll have brown ones with a few black ones on their ear tips or their nose or their legs. Um, or if they're chestnut, they'll all be brown. Um, so that's something to look into when you're looking for references. Um, but I have done this a few different ways and this is the way that I do have done it more recently with the flea bites using this method. Um, I, when I first started out doing this method I didn't water down my paint and I found that that makes it a really really rough texture on your horse's body. So I started watering it down and that makes it much smoother later on. Um, honestly this is probably a little bit too watery but it's okay because I always end up wiping some of it off anyway. That's why I keep paper, paper towels here because it tends to make a mess. Um, and you want to make sure you do this on a table um, that's easy to clean or that you don't care if it gets dirty because believe me when you do this your whole area that you work in will have little flecks of paint all over it. Um, so. I'm just going to check this and make sure that these aren't going to get too big. And you will make a mess of your hand too. It will get everywhere. Um, so, basically all you're going to do is you get your paint on your toothbrush like this, and then you sit here and you just flick it all over. I'm, I'm flicking it on the paper towel right now, but flick it all over your horse like that. And slowly, that's a little big. Slowly, you'll have a flea bitten gray horse. And don't worry too much, like this horse's tail is going to have to be white, but it's going to have some gray in it. Um, so don't worry too much about getting it in your mane and tail because you can always repaint that later. And the one thing I like about this is it does make them kind of random. And they're all, you know, different sizes, and they're all different shapes. Um, and like I said, this method is a lot easier than sitting here and painting all your flea bites by hand. Because you have to be able to paint all these little tiny dots all over your horse and going with the pattern of the hair if you try to do it by hand. Um, and I have a few that I've done by hand, but it takes a very long amount of time, and when you're starting out, this is the best way to do it. 
So as you get more experience, you know, with your white markings and doing small intricate markings on your horse, then you can go to work into doing a flea bitten gray by hand. So now I'm not going to go below the knees or the hocks on this model um, because my reference, like I said, he's going to be of my horse and my horse is a paint so he has very high white markings on his front and back legs. Um, so he doesn't have any flea bites down there. There are some horses though that do. So. And some horses have flea bites heavier in one area than another. Like my horse tends to have more up on his neck and shoulder area than on his rump. But there was a horse that I rode when I was younger that has more around her flank than she did anywhere else. So that's another thing to look at when you're looking at your reference pictures. Or if you're making, you know, one of your horse, that's something to look at and consider. Um, and then since he's a pinto, I'm going to hand paint his white markings um, by hand. And that's the other thing too, if you get this too thick and then you go to go paint white markings over it, then you're going to have all these little bumps in your white markings from where you put your flea bites. But if you water it down well, then it comes out pretty smooth. you can see this. I'll move a little closer. Try not to make a mess of everything. So this is the side. It's about two-thirds of the way done. And then this is the blank side. And it will wear your hand out after a little while too. horse at least, don't have um, flea bites down the center of their face if they had a face marking. Um, my horse only has a snip on the end of his nose, at least that I can see, and I checked him yesterday and he has flea bites to at least here. So, so if your horse has a white face, try to keep it on the sides when you flick it and then you won't get any in the center of their face. Take this little tiny speck off that I messed up.
And if you catch these quick enough before they dry, they will rub right off too, because um, they're pretty small. And then I'm just going to go back and fix it because I accidentally took off too many. So that is pretty much his whole body. Make sure I didn't miss anything. And so my horse is weird and he has this red dot on his shoulder like that. So, okay. So I'm going to go rinse this off my hand and then I'll come back and show you what the next step is after you've gotten them all covered in flea bites. Let's see if I can get you to see this. I'm going to show you guys what I do next. So, the other thing that you have to look for on your flea bitten gray is their shading because a lot of them will have shading either on their legs, in their mane and tail, and all of them will have some kind of shading on their face. So, for this horse, I'm going to do it with pastels because I think if you do them with acrylics, they end up too dark compared to their body color. And I'm putting paper towels down because I make a mess with pastels and I'm trying not to make a mess of the new table. So my horse, the gray on his legs is pretty light colored. Um, and then I have separate brushes for my pastels and I don't clean my pastel brushes because I feel like it just makes them really rough. Um, these pastels, I don't know if it you see it or not, are pan pastels, and they're kind of expensive, but they last a long time. I think I probably had these pastels for a good, uh, two years at least. So, like I said, my horse has some shading on his knees. So I'm just going to sit here and brush them on. It's not very dark at all. His knees are pretty light anymore. They used to be a lot darker, but like I said, gray horses start a dark color and then turn lighter as they get older. And I'm not going to worry about going down too far because on his front legs they come up just about to the middle of his knee so I'm not going to worry about shading the bottom of it very much the one thing I like about pastels especially on a horse that's white is that they're really easy to blend in And if you're looking at getting pastels, but you don't want to spend the money on getting pan pastels, um, any kind of chalk pastel will work to start out with. Um, the ones I had to start out with I think were just like chalk pastels from Hobby Lobby until I got the idea of what I was doing. And understood how they worked a little bit better. And if you can do it with the cheap pastels from 
Hobby Lobby. These come really easy. Okay. So. That is his knee. It's pretty much done. He doesn't have any on his back legs because, like I said, the whites on his back legs come up to about here. Um. Uh, so I don't have to worry about shading anything too low there. Um, but I need to shade around his eyes, around his nose, and then a little bit on his cheekbone right here. Kind of making an L shape on his cheekbone. And around back here just to give him a little bit more definition right there. Um, if you know how to use an airbrush, and you've used one before, um, and you've done the shading on their face before, you can also do this with an airbrush. Like I said, I just prefer to do it with pastels because I think it gives them a little bit of a softer look. probably have to do this in probably three layers. I don't think I've ever done it in fewer than three layers. It may take a few more depending on what kind of pastel you have. Also going to add some shading here and end with his muscles right here just to help define him a little bit better. And the one thing you have to remember with pastels is that they, after you spray them they look a little bit darker than they do when you put them on. So you don't want to put them on too dark. At least these do. These look darker after you spray them. And all I'm doing is just going in with the lines that are already here in this mold, going in with this muscling, and just adding a little bit of shading in there to help make them pop a little bit more. a little too much but it'll brush off or it'll smooth out depending And again, I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Go ahead. He also has some gray in his mane, and I'm not going to do all of it because I still have to paint his mane white um, and then come back to it. But basically you just do the same thing and go with the hairs so that you make sure you get it all down in there. And then go like this and go like that. And I'm not going to do the whole thing because, like I said, I still have to repaint his mane and make it white again.
So what you would do after that is after you get all of this muscled and you're happy with it, then you go and you spray it with a coat of finish to seal all the pastels on there. And if you need to, you can do more layers, like he's going to need a few more layers on his face and probably another couple layers on his knees. Um, and then also you need to make sure that you flip them over and do their underside. That's that layer pretty much done. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of black in here because it's going to need to be darker on him. And like I said, he probably needs another layer, maybe two, on his face and another layer of gray on his knees. But that's going to take me a while to get to. So that's where I'm going to leave it. Um, the rest of it is just basically detail work. Um, so I'm going to go back in and finish the couple layers of pastels on his face and on his knees. Um, his body looks fine to me. Um, and then I'll go back in and I'll paint his tail white and his mane white and paint his white markings. So if you guys have any questions about this or would like to make a suggestion for a future video you can comment that below and I will try my best to answer it. Um, I think the next video I'm going to do is going to be a hooves and eyes tutorial and that one hopefully will be a shorter one just because there's not as much to show you. Um, but I'm going to show how to paint a blue eye, a brown eye, um, striped Appaloosa hooves, a solid light colored hoof, and a solid dark colored hoof. Um, and they're going to be pretty simple. I'm not going to go too much into details because, like I said, I really like keeping these tutorials for people who are just starting out, and so I don't want to make them too complicated just yet. Um, 